Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Erica Brown. Uh, so I guess, first of all, if you could just take me through your past few weeks, I know a lot has gone on. Um, maybe, maybe from the time that you competed at SECs um, up until kind of the last week or so. Yeah, so um, SECs was an amazing meet for us. Um, we had really high um, standards and goals going into that meet, and um, we expected ourselves to do really well, and we were able to do that. Um, so that was a really great moment for us. Um, we just worked so hard the whole season, and we really were such a unit. We're really close, so that was really special. Um, but as soon as that were, was over, we were focused on NCAAs and um, working towards that. Um, but then, of course, that got canceled. So we actually weren't even expecting that. Um, I think kind of all snowballed really fast. Um, we found out on a Thursday. And so three weeks ago yesterday, I think. Um, and then that Wednesday before, I – I had no idea. I mean, we were still training. Um, that morning, Thursday morning, we had practice, and then we had that afternoon off, and um, we were actually called in for a meeting. So when they asked us to come in for our afternoon off, we kind of knew um, something weird was going on. And um, I think at that time, the NBA had canceled the rest of their season, too, so we kind of had an idea. Um, but yeah, that was just a really tough meeting. Um, definitely difficult because we've just worked so hard this whole season and we've really, I, I, in four years, I've never experienced something like we did this season. Um, just an entire group of girls all striving for the same thing, working for it every single day. So it was a really tough meeting and a really hard thing to find out that you know, that final meet together we weren't going to have anymore. Yeah. Have you, do you feel like you've had time to process that? Yeah. Um, so the first couple days after that, um, it was really difficult, especially because things were kind of going crazy. I mean, people were sent home, you were asked to stay in your house, you know, it all happened very quickly. So I definitely had time to think about everything that was going on um at that time the olympics were still on so i was trying to deal with the emotions of not having that last meet but also i feeling like i still needed to train and i needed to be doing everything i could to be in the water so it was definitely difficult um when they announced the post moment of the olympics um obviously that's not what you want to happen but considering the circumstances, it was a relief. Um, yeah. So that kind of helped give me some more time to process everything and kind of reevaluate. Yeah. How, how would, so how would you evaluate you are, you know, today? Yeah, today I'm doing well. Um, I think I try and look at it as how can I make the best of this situation? I mean, everyone is dealing with the same thing and I feel like I'm really lucky that I have my health, um, friends and family are healthy. That's the most important thing right now. And, um, I'm just trying to focus on how I can help, you know, staying inside, um, but also doing my best to stay in shape. So I've had fun learning how to kind of make up my own workouts here at home. Um, I've started running, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm learning to like it. So, um, I am enjoying um, having to take a step back and kind of just figure out new ways to do things because I am very used to a routine. Yeah. I mean, I know we, I posted one of your workouts on Swim Swam, um, one that Thank you, you. And did. And that was, I mean, yeah. that was like a, a very thorough workout. You know, there was the warm up, the main sets, the sprints, the yoga. I mean, you guys had everything. Um, can you, can you, dive a little bit deeper into what it's been like to make up your own workouts? Yeah. So I, Alec, my boyfriend, we actually live together and he's really good at making up workouts. So it's been nice having him here. Um, he's really creative. So I've kind of leaned on him for that. Yeah. Um, he made up that workout. Um, but yeah, we kind of have a routine of 
we'll get up every morning and then either go for a run or make up a circuit circuit workout. Mm -hmm. Um, and we kind of just try and get creative. We'll definitely pull from things that are, um, weight, weight coach Greg will send us. Um, Mm -hmm. but Alex really creative when it comes to that. Nice. And so, you know, you, you mentioned you're learning to like, the running aspect of it, you know, have, have, has there been so, stuff you've really enjoyed doing that you didn't necessarily expect that you would have enjoyed? Yeah. I mean, for running, I, I haven't run more than a mile since eighth grade. So I've been running three to four and a half miles every day. So that's been a big adjustment, but just, we live in a neighborhood. So taking the time to run around and just um, kind of, get to explore outdoors and take time and notice like the beauty of things. Um, that's not something that I do every day, you know, in a pool. So um, just taking time for moments like that, but I've also gotten into cooking more. I like to bake. Um, I make dinner every night because we can't go out anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just taking time to do small things like, um, reading cooking what have you cooked anything that's that's really stood out to you what's been a favorite um well i make a really good cheese danish and i haven't made it for like four months last time i made it i don't know i think i killed the yeast or something it just didn't work out and i made it two days ago and it was really good so that made me feel good (laughs) Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it that took like awesome. eight hours, but it's definitely worth it. For like, for like a thing that's this big? It's like probably like this big. It's oh, okay. pretty big, but you have to let it rise and then roll it out and let it rise like three or four times. So. Wow, mm-hmm. interesting. I've never, I'm, I've never baked before. So oh, really? Nice. Yeah, so that's, that's a whole new world for me, but that sounds awesome. Yeah. Growing up, my mom made everything homemade. So I definitely have a little bit of that. Yeah. Okay. And you, you grew up a few different places, right? Yeah. All over. I was born in California. I moved to Kansas for a little while. We moved back to California. Then my junior year of high school, we moved to um, North Carolina. And then my parents, when I graduated, moved to Maryland. And now okay. I'm moving to Tennessee, so all <laughs> over. <laughs> nice, wow. Um, do you do you, and you cook a lot too as well? Yeah. So my mom, she she would make like desserts and stuff, but she cooked a lot of food growing up. Um, mm-hmm. We always had homemade food, so I'm used to making my own dinners, and to, I've definitely been trying to get more creative with meals while I'm at home. Yeah. What, how, how, how creative are we talking? What's, what's, what's been a good one that you've made on that front? Um, well, I usually make a lot of Mexican food. That's my favorite, but I've been doing more like Asian foods. Um, last night I made a Korean beef bowl. So it was really good with some rice and veggies. Yeah, that sounds, ah, man, I'm getting hungry. Just all this food talk. Um, Let's change the subject. What have you been reading? Um, well, I read a lot of devotionals in my Bible. Um, mm-hmm. I have a couple books that my coaches gave me that I need to get into. One is like um, a Christian book. And then the other one is a mental, I, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's basically a mental training book. So I need to get into those. Yeah. How, so I asked someone this earlier. Um, has has you know engaging your body physically like in a different way you know running and circuits and stuff um has that changed you know how how you approach staying in shape or how you how you think mentally at all yeah well running like i said has been pretty difficult for me so Mm -hmm. i've been kind of using that as a mental challenge like while i'm running um I don't feel that kind of pain like I do when I'm swimming. So trying to overcome that and, you know, continue running. um, I think that that mental barrier definitely will translate into the water. Um, But 
yeah, I think, I think this is a good period of time to work on things that I can't do in the water. So like flexibility, um, endurance on land. Like I feel like my legs are stronger than they ever have been. Um, and that's just in three weeks. So I think I'm just trying to find ways to get better out of the water. Yeah. I know. I know when I talked to Matt last week or the week before, um, he was Matt Credich. He was saying, um, you know, it, it's an interesting time where we can reevaluate and maybe try to make new shapes or see see what we can do differently. Um, and then a lot of people are taking advantage of, you know, just being on land and and progress you can make in that way. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, like a big, some big areas that I need improvement are flexibility and then leg strength. So that's mm. what I'm trying to work on now. Nice. Have you picked up any hobbies that you didn't necessarily expect to or never thought you would have? Mm, I don't know. I'm doing a lot of cleaning and enjoying it. That's not really <laughs> a hobby, but um, usually I don't really enjoy it, but there's nothing else to do. So. I do like organizing everything and cleaning um, and then like making the workout videos or just even if I'm not filming it, but just having that creative aspect is not something that I usually get. Usually I'm given a workout and I do it, but having to kind of pull from um, what I've learned from in the past or just come up with new things. Um, that's been fun. Yeah. What I mean, it obviously a lot of people are posting their workouts and stuff. Was there something in particular that inspired you to post workouts? Um, well, I, when this first happened, I was like, what am I going to do? You know, no pool. I'm used yeah. to going twice a day, um, two hours each practice. So I was on social media and I would see people working out and I love watching other people's videos and getting ideas. So Mm -hmm. um, I thought, you know, why not add to that? Um, so just cause I, I love learning from other people and seeing that. So I think someone else might appreciate that and use that too. Yeah. Has your team been doing anything, um, to kind of stay, you know, keep that cohesion that you guys had during the season? Yeah, actually, um, just before this call, we were on a zoom call together, um, with my class and the coaches. So we're definitely staying okay. in contact. Um, and then our whole girls team has a Snapchat and we'll like stay in touch and see what we're doing each day. Um, yeah. so we're definitely making that effort to keep up with each other and, um, and hold each other accountable too, to make sure we're staying in shape. Does, does that ever turn into a competition? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe. Um, we're, we're too friendly. Like we're sisters. I guess, I guess you can get competitive but I haven't seen it happen yet with this whole thing <laughs> gotcha I know I think it was someone from NC State I was talking to like they have a, a group talk text I don't I don't know what form it was on but you know it's like someone would be like oh I did like 60 pull-ups and someone would be like oh I did 62 <laughs> <laughs> no we haven't done that but I'm sure it would happen if if like we were talking specifics yeah definitely um well, that's, uh, have you guys done, you know, aside from talking, has there been any, um, you know, there's been a lot of TikToks that I've seen there. I know one coach was telling me that they, told, they told their swimmers to write haikus. Um, have, have you guys done anything kind of in a creative way like that? Um, no, not really. I haven't seen anything like that. Um, we, we've kind of just been keeping to ourselves and in our own little group. Um, we'll yeah. send each other like workouts and stuff, but nothing really public. Yeah. Maybe you might see something soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been able to, to, has that been a pretty big um, support system for you just in terms of kind of processing this and, and keeping moving forward? Yeah. No, especially because, of everything we've been through this season and all the goals and plans we had. Um, and then just kind of dropping that and instantly within a day or two, um, it's been nice to still have each other and be able to talk to each other. And, um, you know, it might not be the same goals and the same plans, but we're still 
keeping in contact and making sure that um, we're helping each other, no matter what our individual goals are now. Yeah. Do you, so do you have individual goals now? I mean, maybe not even for swimming, but just, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Um, well, the biggest thing is just staying in shape and getting better. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously I want to keep what I have, but, and that's difficult to think about doing without a pool. Um, but figuring out how I can do that um, on land at home. Um, that's been my biggest goal, but there are other things in swimming that I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, tri trials hopefully is happening next year, I'd, I'd assume, but definitely Olympics. Um, next year, the timeline has just changed. So I'm still looking forward to that. And um, there's a lot of other things going on in swimming. Um, so in the future, as long as everything um, clears up and everyone gets healthy. Yeah. Do, do you see yourself taking like an extended break? sometime like now or in in the near future um as that kind of as a, the olympic year resets um no i'm not a huge fan of taking breaks i really like to just keep going um especially because i i mean i was ready for trials and for olympics this year um so i kind of want to just keep going and stay in as best shape as i can yeah that certainly makes sense. I mean, it's, it seems like it's kind of been a big enough break for everyone anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't want to stay out of the water this long. <laughs> as soon as I can get back in, I will. Yeah. Have you, so when was the last time you did swim? Um, Saturday, two weeks ago, I believe. We, after we found out about, um, NCAAs, we got to swim for another week. We found a pool. And then okay. the that Saturday, they decided that they were shutting everything down. And then we found out that the Olympics was being postponed. So, I mean, everyone would stay home anyway because that's just what we need to do right now. So, yeah, that makes sense. Have, have you, like, is there a lake that you can swim in or have you tried to find other ways to swim? Yeah, so there's a quarry, but it's about 55 degrees, oh. and I hate cold water. I used to complain so much already because I'm tiny, and Alan Jones was so cold, which I would never do again, but <laughs> <laughs> I was already freezing in that pool, so to imagine going in the quarry, I'm a little scared, but if I get a wetsuit, I'm trying to get a wetsuit. It's kind of hard right now. But yeah. if I get one, then I'm definitely going to try it. I know Molly Hannes has been swimming in it um, once in a while. So we'll see if I can. I will. <laughs> yeah. And you, you are still in Knoxville, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. I live here full time. So. Okay. Nice. Have, um, well, any, any closing thoughts you've got? Um, I would just say, um, I think the best thing to do in this situation is just um, find ways to stay in shape. Um, obviously, still following guidelines and um, staying safe. But um, I think it's important just to keep a positive mindset and keep keep trying. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Erica. Yeah, thank you.